Hello, this is Walker Physics, 4th edition. We're in chapter 6 on applications in Newton's laws, and we're in the end of, end of the chapter questions, and this section is on circular motion. So this is question number 62. Driving in your car with a constant speed of 12 meters per second, you encounter a bump in the road that has a circular cross-section, as indicated in the figure. If the radius of curvature of the bump is 35 meters, find the apparent weight of a 67 kilogram person in your car as you pass over the top of the bump. Okay, so this is like the Ferris wheel question that we've done before, where when you go at the top of the Ferris wheel, you feel your stomach catch, okay, so you get light. In fact, depending on the speed, you could actually be weightless as you go around the top, say, of a roller coaster. Okay, you can feel weightless for a moment. When you come to the bottom of a, of a curve, the bottom of a, of a dip, you feel more weight, so you feel heavier. So here, you're going to feel lighter, and the reason you feel lighter is because it's not, your, it's not your weight that you're looking at. You're looking at your apparent weight, okay? So the apparent weight is the weight shoving up. It's the force shoving up from your seat, and it makes you feel like you're heavier or lighter. So if you only have a little bit of force pushing up on the seat, you feel light. If you have a lot of force pushing up on your seat, you feel heavy. Okay, so it doesn't change your weight. Your weight can't change, but your apparent weight can change if you are in a circle, and that's what's happening. As you go over this hump, you're essentially in a circular motion. So what's happening is so let's take the car right here. The, the MG is going to be going down, but I'm not looking at the weight. I'm looking at the support force because that's what's shoving up on you, and it is pushing up. So that's my normal force or my support force. But since I'm going around in a circle, I have a centripetal force that always acts towards the center of the circle because the centripetal acceleration always heads towards that. So since it is a vector, then the force is also a vector. So this is going to be your centripetal force. So what will happen is you find your weight. So if you were on a straight road, you would feel the, the seat pushing back on you equal to your weight. It would be equal, your normal force is equal to your weight. So this is still the case, this is your weight, but we're subtracting, since we're going over a hump, we're subtracting the centripetal force of this uh, circle that you're essentially going over as you pass over the hill. Okay? Well, so centripetal force is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is equal to the square of the velocity over the radius. Okay? So we just need to start filling in some stuff. The m is 67 kilograms. Your velocity is 12 meters per second. So I'm going to square that. And then your radius is what? 35? 35 meters? Okay. All right. So 12 squared times 67 divided by 35, okay. That gives you a centrip centripetal force of 275.66 newtons, all right? What is your force, uh, your normal force? You are 67 kilograms times 9.81, so it's mg, it's equal to mg. So your normal force is 657.27. This is the force that the seat is exerting on you, but you have to cancel. You're canceling this much out. So I'm going to subtract 275.66, and I have 381.61. How many significant digits? Two, two, two. So this would be 380 newtons. Okay. Hope that helps.